Today, I'll continue with the limp-covered book done in a medieval style using link and long stitch sewing through spine plates. I'll get the sewing finished in this video, and at this point the book is bound and you could stop. But in a third video, I'll add weaving over the long stitches, which is both protective and decorative. The first thing that needs to be done is finish making the spine plates. In the last video, I just laminated some leather with two layers of the covering material. Once this dries, I'll give the leather a coating of Hewitt's leather dressing just to give it some protection. And once the leather dressing is dried, I give it a buff. I then cut out the two leather pieces so there's 5mm extending past the holes at the top and bottom, and just under the width of the spine. Then I'll put some wax on the edges and burnish them. I use a leather working burnishing tool to polish the edges. It's just a piece of wood with various width semicircular notches in it. You could just use a bone folder to burnish the edges. I then place the spine plates in position on the cover material and transfer the holes into the leather. I finish by using the screw punch to clean up the holes from the outside, otherwise the leather puckers up around the edges of the holes.
The method of sewing I'm going to demonstrate has the same number of holes for the length stitches as for the long stitches, and there are two sections for each row of holes. I'll talk about variations while sewing. In every historical example of this style of sewing I've seen, the book has been sewn from the front to the back. If there are link stitches at the head and tail, you can tell the order the book was sewn in because the link stitches form little arrows pointing in the direction of the sewing. The link stitches are mostly missing at the tail and there's been some repairs to the head of our example, but it's still clear it's been sewn from front to back. The sewing I'm going to demonstrate is my best guess as to how the exemplar was sewn, but I can only see the sewing on the spine, so I don't know for sure this is how it was done. Being able to see the sewing in the centre folds of the sections would have been very useful, but it is what it is. I find starting the trickiest part of sewing these books. After section 4 the pattern just repeats. Starting the row of link stitches is the trickiest part. In this case, the first two sections are sewn into the cover, ignoring the link stitch holes. So you go from the outside to the inside of the section at the head, but when you go back out, you go through the cover and the spine plate. Go in and out through the section and cover until you reach the end. And then go out the section, but not through the cover, and back into the second section. Do the same for the second section using the same row of holes until you reach the end, then join the two sections with a square knot on the inside of the cover. Add the third section and sew the same but in the second row of holes. Once you reach the end it's time to start the link stitch.
Go out the second hole and back into the first hole. Take the thread around the thread joining the first two sections, then back out the first hole and into the second. This is the start of the link stitch. The same will happen on the return to the other end. The thread now goes into the fourth section which uses the same holes as the third. As mentioned, the link stitches are started the same as already described at the other end. Now it's a matter of repeating this pattern until the book is sewn. If you have an odd number of sections, once the final section has been added, the thread just returns down the centre of the last section. This last section will have two threads inside of it. There's an almost endless variation of sewing options for these limp covered books. Another common version of the link long stitch combination uses an extra hole at the head and tail link stitch locations, and I know of at least two different ways of starting this variation. It was also common to have link stitches without long stitches. The intermediate locations were often staggered to provide a decorative element, including circles. Sometimes link stitches were done through the spine plates only as purely decorative elements. If you see a circle where the link stitch arrow is in the same direction all the way around the circle, then you know it's only decorative. If it's part of the sewing of the sections, half will point in one direction while the other side will point in the opposite direction. There is also a version of long stitch sewing that doesn't use link stitches, and this is known as archival long stitch. Zermai lists three variations of archival long stitch. I'll do videos on these in the future.
To finish, just go back inside the last section and tie off with an overhand knot. If you want, you could be finished now, but next week I'll continue to add some weaving over the long stitch, like what is on the book that we've based this binding on, and I'll also add the thread for the closure. As always, I really appreciate you hitting the like button. You can support the making of more videos like this through Patreon. If you want to be notified of my future videos, please hit the subscribe button and select the notification bell. Until next time, cheerio!